The following podcast contains alcohol-enhanced conversations about alcohol, as well as the potential for the discussion about topics of dubious, disturbing, possibly offensive, but usually hilarious interest. The opinions stated herein are solely of the persons making them, and any endorsement of these opinions by any other party is not implied. Foul language is likely, but intolerant viewpoints are not. Listener intoxication is advised. Hello and welcome to episode 28 of the Whiskey Tangent Podcast. I'm Scott. And I'm Ed. And tonight we're returning to a category that we feel like we still haven't talked about enough, and that's rye whiskey. Yes. Because even though we did just release a short about our top 10 ryes, out of the 61 whiskeys, and I counted, that we've actually tasted and reviewed on air, only 11 have been ryes. But tonight we're going to start swinging back that old whiskey pendulum and focus specifically on the rye surgeons that the segment is currently enjoying. And as always, we're comparing two different expressions, one produced by one of America's oldest distilleries and relatively inexpensive, and the other produced by one of America's newest distilleries and decidedly not inexpensive. Decidedly not. (laughs) Which we feel will serve as jumping off points for a lively tasting and discussion. And in that tasting and discussion, here at the socially distanced Whiskey Tangent Breakfast Bar, joining us once again are our friend Siobhan. Hi! A.K.A. the mayor of Jackie's Crossing. (laughs) uh, And of course, Gabe, the Whiskey Sherpa. Hello again. So get out your favorite tumbler, pour yourself a spicy rye, sit back, put your feet up, and listen whilst Ed <laughs> tells us which extraordinary rye whiskeys we've chosen to introduce to you and ourselves tonight. Right. Thanks, Scott. We talked about how we feel that the country is returning to its roots. Rye was the whiskey of the colonies, and it was actually doing tremendously and blossoming and was everywhere until Prohibition came and leveled it. Mm-hmm. And it's taking much longer to come back around and take its proper place in America whiskey culture. Correct, Ed. And we'll get into more of that in a bit. So first off, an oldie but a goodie. We have Sazerac Straight Rye put out by our friends at Buffalo Trace. It has a long and interesting history, which Scott will be happy to tell you all about. (laughs) And then from the leader of the new up-and-coming specialty rye whiskey market, Whistlepig, located up in Vermont, uh, we are going to feature their 12-year expression, Mm. which is... Very exciting. I've never had it. No. We've had some whistle pig. I've had the 10 year. We've even had two different boss hogs. Yes. And yet I've never had the 12 year. Yeah, this was recommended by Anders on our top 10 rye short. Yes, it was. And so we're looking forward to it. A blend of three expressions combining to make this unique whiskey from Whistle Pig, the 12 year old world style, should be a treat. And we're very excited. Yes. And we hope our guests are too. Absolutely. So, so what do you want to do first? Do you want to do a little bit about the history and the resurgence of the rye, the rye surgence, as I coined it? <laughs> or do you want to get into the Sazerac? and then the whistle pig and do the history later no no let's do a little bit of the history and then we'll do the sazerac first and then we'll save what i hope to be the best for last all right thank you oh god i forgot her name saving the best for last she want to help me out is it natalie no saving the best for last oh forget it oh, is it it's, Whitney it's, Houston? It's on the tip of my tongue she was miss america Vanessa Williams. Vanessa Williams. There we go. Dang. Saving the best for last. That's you right. Ed, you yeah. don't remember? You don't remember it, that song? I just don't a, know why you worked so hard for that. I'm confused. But, but, wow. Because there's editing. Well, because she was a, a one-hit wonder and she also appeared uh, in Playboy. Whoa, slow down. One she hit was wonder. not a one-hit wonder. Pump your brakes. Raise That's your true. hand if you've seen her in concert. Wow. How did I know? Wow. How'd I know? There you go. Opened up for Luther Vandross. Wow. I, oh, wow. You saw two. Uh, wow. I got laid that night. <laughs> <laughs> If you did not get laid that <laughs> night, there is something seriously wrong. And see, that's yeah. why I tried so hard. <laughs> exactly. Nobody does it better. <laughs> that's Carly Simon. She's white. You didn't get laid at that concert. No. No. Mm. All right. So this is a little thing I call Rye Surgeons. 
<laughs> with that exclamation point, just to be such anger, just to be belligerent. belligerent. It could be like just really excitement, it's like yes, yeah. Roy Sargent. <laughs> Exactly. Okay. So in episode eight, we talked about the founding fathers and the story of how rye whiskey had supplanted rum in the hearts of the early colonists. In episode 14, we talked further about how rye continued to surge in popularity until prohibition kicked off its long decline. Mm -hmm. In this episode, we're going to talk about how rye has been making increasingly steady gains in a whiskey industry saturated with bourbon and scotch. But just to quickly recap the history of the rye discussed in those previous episodes, in the 1700s, Scottish and Irish immigrants began distilling whiskey in America using rye instead of their native barley, mostly in the states of Maryland and Pennsylvania, yielding sweeter and spicier variations, respectively. In 1794, the Whiskey Rebellion mm -hmm. raged in southwestern Pennsylvania over taxation of their Monongahela style of rye. In 1797, George Washington and his Scottish plantation manager, James Anderson, began distilling rye whiskey at Mount Vernon and selling it, eventually making a half a million dollars in today's money before the distillery burned down in 1814 and was never rebuilt. Always burned down. Man, distilleries yeah. go down all the time. Yeah. It's it not if your distillery burns up, it's when it's it, burns, when it up. burns up. During the 1800s, rye whiskey became the favored spirit for mixing into cocktails that use sugar and fruit juices to temper its spicy nature. And in the 1920s, Prohibition and the Great Depression curtailed most of the distilling of rye whiskey for three major reasons. Rye is more expensive and labor intensive to turn into a whiskey than corn is. Corn became a federally subsidized crop, causing farmers to grow more corn than rye. And imported Canadian whiskeys had lower standards of what could be called a rye, and thus it was usually of lower quality, all of which bestowed upon rye a bad reputation. Word. During the rest of the 20th century, rye fell further, taking a backseat to bourbon, scotch, then vodka, then wines, craft beers, and now bourbon again. But then, sometime after the turn of the 21st century, something changed. As bourbon exploded in popularity, some bartenders and their whiskey patrons, who had been early bourbon adopters, were starting to get a little restless. Okay. Yep, 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 rye, 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 yep, 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 Rye. Where was I? Okay. Rye. You're on, you were talking about rye. Oh, a bit more adventurous yearning to return to the bolder flavors of rye. rye. <laughs> Whiskies and the original rye based cocktails of old, including the Manhattan, episode five. Yay. The Vu Carre, episode 15. Yay. The Word A, episode 20. Mm -hmm. And the Sazerac, hopefully, episode 30. Stay tuned. In 2006, the influential New York Times style section declared rye to be the next boutique find gushing that unlike bourbon which is characteristically sweet smooth and rounded rye has a dry jangly brash nature its spicy flavors practically dance their way through the mouth in its simplest form rye is a little grassy and sour much like rye bread with age it becomes more complex and subtle weaving spice and caramel flavors over and through the grassiness yet it retains its angularity never quite losing its edginess a manhattan made as originally conceived with rye instead of bourbon is a completely different cocktail altogether Rye is a completely, completely different, different cocktail. cocktail. <laughs> <laughs> Dynamic rather than soothing, more Harley Davidson than Cadillac. But they noted finding these whiskeys is another matter. For a recent rye sampling, we, being the New York Times, barely managed to scrape together 15 different brands. That was in 2006. But today, that is decidedly not the case, as we're nearly bursting at the seams with rye whiskey. The category currently produces approximately 1 million cases, which although still small compared to bourbon's 22 million, it's a tenfold growth in just 10 years right. from the mere 100,000 cases produced in 2010. That's and there's, amazing. Yeah. And there's nowhere to go but up. MGP in Indiana, as we all know, has several rye recipes at the ready. Big brands like Jack Daniels, Jim Beam, Wild Turkey, Buffalo Trace, Knob Creek, and Woodford Reserve all have excellent rye expressions. And of course, there's now a new crowd of emerging distilleries that put out almost nothing but rye whiskeys. Think Maryland's Sagamore Spirit, which we've had a few tonight, mm -hmm. uh, Utah's High West, mm -hmm. and Vermont's Whistle Pig, which we'll be featuring tonight. All of them eager for the chance to make their mark with a lesser-known cousin of bourbon and looking to get in on the ground floor of the revival of America's original national spirit. 
Awesome. Hey, yeah. Amen, Rye brother. whiskey. So the first one we're going to look at is the Sazerac. It's in our glasses. Uh, there's two variations on it that's made today. And okay. according to Scott, there's three, but I found two. Uh, <laughs> Sazerac Rye Whiskey is released in an 18-year-old release. It's very rare. And then the ongoing no-age statement, which we're drinking today, yeah. which is usually believed to be around six years, but it's at least four. Correct. It's is the it, same exact match bill as the 18, yeah. which we don't know what it is, though. We don't. But, but it's low rye. What I, yeah, what I saw was 51 rye, 39 corn, and 10 malted barley. Right, but that's speculated. Exactly. That is not official. But I bet you it's been around long enough that I bet it's pretty damn close. Yeah, probably close. This is a 90 proof. All right, so it's got a little punch to it. On the nose, you're looking for fruity in the beginning with some orange zest and raisin. Yes. Mm, greets the senses with a nice hints of rye spice and anise. Mm. Anise on your nose? Yeah. Mm, oh my God, I love I love better. when I get a nice That's anise. so much better. I love when I get a little anise on my I, nose. I, you know, I do smell the orange zest. Oh, yeah. no, even four to six years, it's not that immature. It's a, it's a fine spirit. I'm immature, but the whiskey's good. <laughs> yeah, I'm catching the orange, too, now that you mentioned yeah. it. Yeah. I also got some caramel, vanilla, sweet corn. Yep, yep. Yeah, your typical... Uh, there's, now, there's sweetness there, yeah. On the taste, the orange zest turns into orange peel, and the raisins turn into plum flavor with traditional notes of caramel vanilla. There's a little, you'll, you'll taste some char in the background. Yep. Right up front, though, there should be some fruit flavors comprised of sweet apricots, along with those orange peels and plums. So there, I am catching there, that. There I'm getting apricots. a citrus overload. Man, it goes through so many flavors so quickly. Mm-hmm. It's right. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, it's like the lights on like uh, Close Encounters, like. Mm-hmm. <laughs> pretty cool so um wow that's really good uh it's very uh spicy but i get all the orange i get the char i get the anise at the very end wow that's really good well the, the finish is going to have kind of a burst of rye it's a little light black licorice notes mm-hmm. follow mm-hmm. and then that's quickly overtaken by a spicy sweet blend of dark fruits caramel and a little black pepper on the finish uh absolutely and invites you back for more back back for more crickets <laughs> I want the crickets. we're still gonna get the crickets no now, scott's gonna tell you about thomas h handy which is kind of like the third expression they put it? out but i'll leave that for him oh you know what i i didn't actually do any research on it i just know of it oh right, well it's another bottle that's included in the buffalo trace release that uses the same match bill which scott mentioned earlier a barrel strength, the main right? difference between sazerac and thomas h handy is the proof because Handy's released at a barrel proof. Right. And you it's just like saying Handy. And it's, cr- yeah. it's I like cr- hearing Handy. <laughs> it's crazy expensive, too. Yeah, I would love. It's like lo- $600. Yeah. Man, I would love to come across or get score a little Handy. If I get a Handy tonight, for example, that'd be amazing. But at that price? <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, Siobhan and Gabe, what do you think about this? I'm really digging it. Every, all the, the stuff you said coming in the palate, it's complex. It's uh, it's a middly, oily feel. It lingers. It's mm-hmm. got the spice. It's got the burnt orangeness. You linger. You're still here. <laughs> size. You know, oh, size. Gosh. The look that <laughs> the look Gabe, was the, Gabe Dave. The, 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 the sweltering look you guys got. <laughs> I'm going to put a little disclaimer out here. I, I've been told that I have a short fuse and an anger about me, and I've been oh, working shit. on it, trying to be more patient, trying to be... This is, trying you ca- to be you more, came to the wrong place. Wait, his, eye, his, wait, his, his eyes just turned green and his shirt split. What does that mean? <laughs> Game smash! You do not like me when I'm angry. Ed? I love you. Aww. <laughs> So just so sweet. This is great to be in between a sandwich. <laughs> so I, I'm I'm really impressed with this whiskey. I didn't think it was going to taste this complex or um, oh. have this dense mouthfeel. Yeah, at I all. thought it was going to be in the neighborhood of like the mixing one that that, that we oh had. Uh, like Rittenhouse. Yeah, Rittenhouse. Or, I yeah. thought this would be like very functional, peppery, distinct flavors that will go well in a cocktail, but not something that you would really hold up and be like, "Hey, drink this." Because remember, it was made for a cocktail. Right. It was designed to go in a cocktail. With sugar, with absence, it was yeah. so. It was not even designed to be drank by itself. So I'm yes, so I had very low expectations. I agree. Yeah. So does that mean we're going to get some Scott Hands? Oh, so maybe, yeah. maybe. Yeah. Speaking of the uh, the absinthe, have you guys ever tried the uh, the Sazerac? No, I've, I've never I've had been, a Sazerac. We're going to do it yeah. on episode thirty, hopefully. I'm compelled to, to give that a try. The oh, the, 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 the yeah. complex. No, we're, we're we're looking to do it. We're going to have some absinthe up in here. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I, I was going to say, I thought it was just an explosion of centrus. Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. No, it's good. Like, as it is. soon Very as fruity. I drink it. I hope it. you get some absinthe, lose my mind. Up in here. Up, up in here. here. Going to get some absinthe, lose ah. my mind. Up in here. Up, up in, in here. here. 
So you were saying, Siobhan? Yes, yeah, Siobhan, you were saying? Citrus? A, a burst <laughs> of citrus, and then <laughs> as you continue to let it sit, it's just the spices yeah. are just so ever present along with the sweetness. It's very spicy. Yeah, it is. And, you know, it's it's one of those ones that are actually so smooth going in. And then that little bite, the little nibble, yeah. you know, is it's, like right there. It, it, what Ed was saying, this rye, even today, is still marketed as a cocktail mixer. Right. And, right. and you can so see much, why. It, but it's so much better than that. Yeah, and it, it really is. And yeah. it's priced a little high for a mixer. It's like 36 30, Yeah. I mean, it's, it says 30 for the MSRP. Yeah. It's actually very rare in this area it's, in New Jersey to yeah, find Yeah, I, I had to pay 38 for it. Right, because I went to four places. Scott went to five places until we found it. So it's yeah. nine places to find it. I didn't even see it. Yeah. So for what it is, when I compare it to the James E. Pepper that we had last episode. Yeah. Which you hated. I hated. Um, Scott, um, I enjoyed. It actually fit what Scott said about old original rye. Like when yeah. they when they say that they're using the old, I think it's a 1934 recipe. I completely agree because it is devoid of any sweetness or flavor. It is just fucking pepper. Yeah, like it is a rude raw rye whiskey. But this one here, this has. A lot of floral and fruity notes and sweetness to it. Uh, some traditional vanilla and caramel in the middle of that. Yeah. And then a spicy, peppery finish. Yeah. And that's what Sazerac brings for you. Yeah. This yeah is, you're, you're getting all that. It's yeah. better than salt in the throat. So I'd say. Mm-hmm. It's better to kick in the shins. Right. It's better true. than right. a Tanya Harding. Yeah. So. Tanya Harding, that's when you, you drink a, a shot of whiskey and someone clubs you in the shin. <laughs> Go, you got glue with the bourbon. <laughs> Why? <laughs> You just got good money, bitch. Oh, oh my God. Everybody made fun of Nancy Kerrigan. And I was like, what the fuck would you do exactly. if you were minding your own business? I was thinking the same Wait, thing. Wait, you're at the Olympics minding your own business yep. and some motherfucker clubs you in the fucking yeah. knee. Right. And that's exactly like, what you would say. Why? Well, it wasn't the Olympics. It was actually at the national championships. But so right, what? right. But the point is, when would you expect it? It's like when the crazy person stabbed Monica Seles during a tennis oh, match. I know. That was when the motherfucker hard. jumps out of the stands and just stabs her in her back while she's between fucking matches. I'm pretty sure I caught that life the guy probably had a couple glasses of pepper bourbon before he so, did that. right i think he had some jmz pepper bourbon in the stands just couldn't stand it <laughs> he went crazy yeah. guess who's never going to be a sponsor <laughs> <laughs> jmz pepper yeah jmz pepper your, your your bourbon sucks but it's yeah. a great story jmz pepper himself was an amazing individual True. And very very quirky yeah so it's it, only the last episode yeah, go yeah, back and listen yeah go back and listen to he's in his story i mean he practically invented the old-fashioned new york city he gets credit for that if nothing sure. else right so maybe that uh segues into the history of the Sazerac. Yes. Like all great tales, it started in a bar. Mm. In the late 1830s in New Orleans' famed French Quarter. Nolens. Nolens. In Exchange Alley, a man named Sewell T. Taylor owned a small establishment called the Merchant's Exchange Coffee House. There he served cocktails made with a cognac called Sazerac de Forge et Fils, absinthe, and a special concoction of bitters provided by Antoine Peychaud, a Creole immigrant who operated a nearby pharmacy. The cocktail was named Sazerac after the cognac he used, which he was able to import and sell exclusively. So nobody else could get this cognac. Oh my God. Who's being <laughs> Re- Really, Gabe? <laughs> We promised Gabe after this section, before we went to the Whistle Pig, that he could have cheesecake. So right. he's getting a little oh. belligerent because he realizes that this is past his cheesecake time. You promised <laughs> cheesecake. I, I oh, my God. The more he talks, the less cheesecake's in my mouth. What the fuck? I've been nothing but Blah, calm. blah, blah. Rye whiskey. Get me cheesecake. <laughs> Gabe wants cheesecake now. I sleepy if you don't get me cheesecake. Yeah, all, right. Right. all right. So this part, when I, I'll say it, nice. I'll say it at regular speed, but then I'll speed it up real fast and then edit. <laughs> <laughs> cheesecake. <laughs> I'm never coming back. Uh, Blood sugar is low, everybody. Yes. Okay. So in 1850, Taylor sold the bar to Aaron Bird, Fancy. not to be confused with Aaron Burr. Shot at uh, Alexander Hamilton. No, you Alexander have great Hamilton. pronunciation. I heard you say the D loud and clear. They, they, thank you. Um, uh, who renamed it the Sazerac Coffee House in order to capitalize on the popularity of the drink and solidify its reputation as the place to get the authentic cocktail. Suffice it to say, the Sazerac Coffee House Bar changed hands several times afterwards, finally coming into the possession of Thomas H. Handy. Handy! Yeah, in 1869, oh. Handy was the first person to have the idea to use rye whiskey in the Handy. Sazerac cocktail instead of yep, yep. cognac, <laughs> which made the already insanely popular cocktail even more insanely popular. Yup, 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 y
1873, Handy bought out the rights to Peshaw's Bitters and in the 1890s began selling the rye-based cocktail in bottles and opened a new Sazerac bar in Royal Street. Ever since, except for becoming a delicatessen and a grocery store during Prohibition, of fucking course, <laughs> the Sazerac company has distilled an ever-increasing line of fine spirits. Fast forward to the 1980s and William Goldring, now a billionaire, began buying up shares of the company and then eventually purchasing it outright. You, you can still get Picard Bitters, too, in the store. The Peshaw's, not Picard, like that's John Luke Picard. Card? Yeah, right. Make it <laughs> you, so. John Luke, John Luke Picard has bitter. Yes, he's bi- he's bitter over not being Kirk, from what I hear. <laughs> <laughs> oh, geek humor, love it. <laughs> nerd, <laughs> nerd, nerd, nerd. Yep, 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 nerd, yep, 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 nerd, nerd, yep, 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 Today they're yep, an, yep, 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 yep. I'm almost done. Yep. <laughs> Today they're an independent American family-owned company and proud owners of many of America's most venerable distilling companies, including, mm-hmm. and this is an impressive list, Fleischmann, Bowman, Mr. Boston, Glenmore, Barton's, and Buffalo Trace. Wow. And just to give you some idea of how extensive their liquor lineup is, they yep. have five ryes, including the rye we're drinking tonight, 12 blended whiskeys, most of which you've not heard of, 40 bourbons, most of which you have heard of, mm. including the entire 1792 Barton's lineup, mm. Blanton's, Buffalo Trace, Eagle Rare, E.H. Taylor, Emerald T. Lee, George T. Stagg, Pappy Van Winkle, and W.L. Weller. Damn. Just to name a portion. And... 10 scotches, 16 brandies and cognacs, 17 Canadian whiskeys, 18 bottled cocktails, 21 rums, 25 gins, 28 tequilas, 4 liqueurs, and 51 vodkas. What? Jesus wow. Christ. 51 vodkas? 50 Share, baby. Share. Vodkas. That's 50 more than I need. That is how much fucking liquor they have. Just Good get Lord. me stolen. Could you imagine up their holiday parties? <laughs> Right. That's got to be amazing. It's all Budweiser. Well, <laughs> like, so all the ones that I didn't mention, it's because you've never heard of them. They're all right. like discount brands. Thanks but, for not. But still. We're, we're just going to cut them later if you mention them, so it's good. Right. No, yeah. It's way too many. And, and now it- I'm going to name all 51 vodkas. Number three, <laughs> <Yeah>. Bartons. <laughs> Number four, Old <laughs> Overhauser. <laughs> Number five, Bottom Shelf Dweller. <laughs> Number right. six. Old bottom dweller. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. So, Dusty, nobody wants. So let's, say, let's take a break here. Yeah. Wait, we agree that this is good. It's right? better. Yes, right. very, very good. good. Yes. Also, it's absolutely. better than we thought yeah. it was going to be. Not that we thought it was going to be terrible, but. No. So we'll be right back. We're going to go and uh, switch over, clean our glasses, and get the Whistle Pig 12 year. <laughs> And a few other surprises. Other whistle pigs are going to show up to the party Woo! as like, uh, you know, kind of guest appearances, if you will. Sure. And uh, we'll be back and tell you all about that. Okay, so we're back. Uh, we poured a little bit of the Whistle Pig 12 year into our glasses, but first, Ed is going to tell us a little bit about the company itself. It began when founder and chief steward of the brand, Raj Peter Bakta, purchased a farm in 2007. After a few years of deep consideration and personal reflection, he committed to crafting the best damn farm to bottle rye whiskey you can have. So he sat down with master distiller Dave Pickerel. Oh, yeah. Old friend uh, Dave. The most famous consultant in the whiskey business. We'll sure. get to him in a minute. Sure. And Dave discovered this incredible stock of 10-year-old 100% rye whiskey in Canada mm. that they felt was being profoundly misused and, and allowed them to pursue their vision of a fully farmed bottle distillery. Mm. So they also sourced some from MGP as well. And even as they begin to grow their own immature rye whiskey, the Canadian rye has been their staple. Mm. So Raj Peter Bakta in the 150-year-old barn that was on the property in Shoreham, Vermont, is where him and Dave Pickerel built their still. The interesting thing is, yep. Whistlepig has two tasting rooms, one at the farm and the other inside Vermont Artesian Coffee and Tea in Woodbury Center, which has a Ben & Jerry's located right next door, so you can have oh. whiskey a la mood. Oh, do they, do, do they have cheesecake like- there? 
<laughs> it's you and the cookie. fucking cheesecake. Random belligerence. Cheesecake edition. <laughs> oh. But there is a cheesecake flavor ice cream from Ben and Jerry. Oh, sure. there we go. Why wouldn't there be? Yeah. That sounds like a good. Road I wonder trip. if we can get some Ben and Jerry's, guys. Oh yeah, maybe that'd be great. Maybe we can. We'll, we'll tweet this episode to oh. Ben and Jerry's. What's our email address again? <laughs> Chunky monkey. Don't tell everybody your pet name for me. Oh. <laughs> Where's your banana? Peel that bitch. Let's talk about the twelve year Scott. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah, oh God, I'm so excited to taste this. Not only because it, I bought it for $115, the Whistle Pig 12 year. It's called the Old World Rye. It's an American blended and finished rye whiskey. The proof is 86. The mash bill is 95 five rye, uh, rye and malted barley from MGP. And what they did was they took three different amounts of it. They finished one in port barrels, seven percent. They finished the second in sauterne barrels, thirty percent. And the third, they finished in Madeira barrels. Funky cold Madeira. 63%. <laughs> On the nose, we have some in our glasses. You're supposed to smell sponge cake and buttercream icing. Ooh, okay. Chocolate chip cookies with a hint of oak. Yeah, I get caramel and vanilla and a little bit of a floral or fruit mm-hmm. as well. Uh, uh, same here. Uh, yeah. Definitely floral. I'm getting a sweet floral and oak. Put down orange peel as the first Oh, scent. orange peel. Okay. You're wrong. I was kidding. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I'm just kidding. I don't smell that. But I, I smell red licorice. <laughs> <laughs> That's the bag of Twizzlers that we have right here. I smell mm. cheesecake. You it's smell delicious. cheesecake. It's because it's in your beard. <laughs> <laughs> then you smell nut too. Oh, freak. oh wow. damn! Oh, wow. I mean nuts like, uh, like yeah, like cashews. Cashews. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Serenity now. Not two teas. Serenity two now. Teas. Now we're gonna taste it. Okay. Wow, I can't believe it's 86 proof. No. It's more alcohol for it than I expected. Yeah. Spice and pepper. I mean, yeah. so many different layers of flavor. It's peppery. I taste a lot more fruits on the palate that I smelled on the nose. Yes. It's oddly yeah. both sweeter and mm-hmm. spicier on the palate than yes. the nose. But not like a sugar. Almost like a not a little caramel, but like a honey almost. Like a honey type of sweetness. A pure sweetness. Uh, the, on the palate, you're supposed to taste red berry sweetness, raspberries, raisins, and cherries. Mm-hmm. Then cinnamon and nutmeg with a hint of anise. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Up your anus. Again with the anus. It's, it's too tempting. Your anus is so tempting. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> When's the last time someone rammed your anus? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You well, just love anus in your mouth. Tuesday, I think it was. <laughs> <laughs> Siobhan, I'm sure you have a delightful anus yourself. I th- why, thank you. I think the mm-hmm. balloon nut's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> balloon nut. Gabe has bleach, I've heard. I've heard rumor. <laughs> no, it's just not bleach, it's gray. Ha! Gabe is speechless for once. But I bet you would taste so like the f- what's the fi- <laughs> <laughs> what's the fin- the finish is <clears throat> the finish is honeyed cereal, white wine, mint I- leaf, and dark chocolate. See, I did mention honey though. Uh, you did. I dark, said it ended with the sweetness. I'm getting the honey. I'm not getting any chocolate notes on this. Uh, uh, I'm not either. Yeah. Maybe with a little water or something. It might, Maybe with the side of the cheesecake. Maybe with some ice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, Let, let's get a little bit of water. All right, so with a little bit of water on it, I am tasting a little bit of chocolate notes. Why is it every time you bring up putting a little bit of water in the whiskey, it turns into chocolate? What it does is it proofs it down a little bit and it suppresses the alcohol burn. Yeah. And when that's suppressed, all the other flavors are able to get through, Gabe. I can understand that, but why Why all of a sudden does... If chocolate wasn't there before the water came in, why is well, all it was there, but the, the alcohol hit it. it. Overpowered by the other right. right, it was being masked right by the alcohol. And Gabe, I think it just happens to be the whiskeys we're tasting tonight yeah. that come off with a little bit of chocolate. Like not every whiskey is going to come up with chocolate. No, and it's not. Yeah. You're right, but well, sometimes you'll taste it neat, and you'll taste a little bit of dark. And if you put the water or a bit of ice and let it mellow, let it proof down, somehow it turns into milk chocolate. But if you don't taste anything off the bat at chocolate at all, and then you get some water in there, all of a sudden it's like I would kind of say like going back to a previous episode of Mm -hmm. Sexton. Yeah. How it's so light Mm. going in, but then as it kind of simmers, you taste everything. And I think when you add the ice to it, it kind of gives you that softer feel. Mm -hmm. So everything else has an opportunity to open up. Like if you, you know, if you have too much pepper in something, what do you do? You add a little salt, right? Or you add a little water to kind of dilute it a little bit. Mm -hmm. So you can get the other tasting because the pepper is just too powering. Absolutely. Look how much you've learned, girl. I know. So a little bit more about the owner now, (laughs) if I can... Raj Peter Bakta. Bakta. He was born in uh, 1975. He's 44 years old. Bakta. Um, in 2004, Bakta. he was... A- Sorry. In 2004, 
<laughs> like I've never been interrupted. Look at the, the look Ed gave us. Look, <laughs> it was like the third time. Like it's like, like I, I just, look of heat. No, it's actually kind of interesting that in 2004 he was a contestant on the second season of The Apprentice. The owner of Whistlepig. Okay. And then he runs for Congress and loses, running for uh, the 13th district in Pennsylvania. And then he goes up and he buys the Whistlepig farm up in Vermont. And it's like a beautiful story about like traditional whiskey that you love. Like he builds the distillery in the old 150 year old barn and everyone's mm. hippies and they sit around there and they have pigs and chickens and they grow their own grains and foods and it's organic. And the problem is, as we all know, Whistle Pig exploded into this incredible business. Oh. It, Bacon everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> Sausages for every <laughs> pork, <laughs> ham. Well, I mean, there has been some knuckles, they, pork they, chops. Mortimer was their favorite pig, and it died. And the still is actually named for Mortimer. Oh, and of course, we know Mauve died too for the fifth edition of the Boss Hog. Yeah, that was Mortimer's uh, mm. side bitch. I think his girl. Oh, his his, his, his side, side piece. Bitch. Yeah, it's such an actu- interesting story. They were trying to mate Mortimer's female companion with, with some European hogs, and Mortimer tried to protect her and got so upset the end up leading to his own death oh wow but he died with the honor of protecting his woman get from- out even pigs can be stand-up guys <laughs> so and everything's going fine until he grows so big that he has to bring in very very quickly other founders who are financial guys oh, lawyers and man. investment bankers and so that's eventually when, that's when trouble started, in 2016 right? about eight years after they were in business and going uh-huh Two of them tried to oust him mm. from the board. They tried to fire him and take over his company from him. Dicks. So at first, he's like, no, fuck you. You're not getting my company, and I'm not selling out. But eventually, you know, the way corporate America can, eventually they got enough people to move against him. Mm-hmm. And by 2017, he was completely bought out of Whistlepig. Okay? And I'll read the thing. Whistlepig, the Shoreham-based number one distiller in the fast-growing ultra-premium and luxury white whiskey category, has announced a partnership with BDT Capital Partners of New York. You done with BDT? <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, you know me. <laughs> no, apparently, apparently we're not, because these guys sound like dicks. <laughs> oh, my God. So in 2017, Whistlepig won the Best in Show whiskey title in the blind tasting at the, at the prestigious San Francisco World Spirits Competition. Yeah. Mm. And in 2010, the company had received the highest rating given to a rye whiskey mm. for its 10-year-old straight mm. rye mm. with a 96, only surpassed by its 15-year with Ooh. a 97 rating in 2016. Mm. The quote from the current CEO, we remain committed to crafting and aging the world's finest and most enjoyable rye whiskeys and believe our partnership with BDT will allow us to further accelerate our growth and momentum in the fast-growing ultra-premium American whiskey category. But the key, though, and I think that what makes the whiskey itself special is mm. that the people crafting it are still the same people that were there developing it. Right. Just for so, the record. So Bakta is out. Bakta's out. He but the people it. that he hired are still there. Right. So there's um, some other expressions by the whistle pig that we're going to uh, get into. There's the piggy back six year rye, which we have here today. It's 100 percent rye, 96.56 proof, which is very specific. And that was created by Dave Pickerel in 2018 from the Canadian sourced rye whiskey proofed at that specific level in honor of the year of his birth in 1956. It retails for about 40 to $50. That's not uh, bad. So since we have it here, maybe we should taste it. All right. Okay. The tasting notes are supposed to be powerfully spicy with cocoa, cardamom, cured leather, baking spices, vanilla, and hints of citrus. It's a, it's oh. a lot lighter on the nose. Definitely, Definitely lighter. lighter yeah. Right, compared to 12 year? Very floral and very fruity. Even yeah. though it's 10 proof higher. It's a little more alcohol forward for sure. Very fruity and minty. It but is, yeah. It's very a, floral. It's wow. Got, it's got a bit of Wrigley Spearmint gum yes, to it. it it's one of the most floral rice I've ever had. It's this this is powerful. Like, clove. Yeah. Baking spices. Yep. Heavy. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> no, it's like so surprising to me. Very peppery at the end. I'm getting it, a lot of citrus, too. I think it just turned to Ed into Sean Connery for a second. So good. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Yes, yes, quite. That was your mother, Trebek. (laughs) (laughs) Rough like your mother likes it, Trebek. (laughs) Trebek. Ooh, this is good. I like this a lot. I'll take the rapist for four (laughs) hundred. You mean therapist? (laughs) (laughs) That's good. It's it's, honestly, uh, I really, I don't want to say this, 
I don't want to say it. Then don't. I don't. Off yeah. air. All right, go ahead. Come say back it. and say it. pour some more of the 12 and go side by side with it. Because I know what you're saying. Okay, so I'm not going to say the piggyback is better. What I'm going to say is that I wish that the Whistle Pig 12 year was a higher proof. Mm. Because I feel like it's a little thin. Mm. Compared to. Yeah. I will argue one thing for you. Okay. That the piggyback was distinctly created for cocktails. It was. Because everybody was complaining that Whistle Pig's price point was so high mm-hmm. on their whiskeys that you couldn't use it in a cocktail and clear conscious. Yeah. So they created the piggyback. Mm-hmm. And that's why I think they pumped up the, the fire a bit okay. so that you could dilute it with, you know, vermouth or simple syrup and it wasn't going to fucking flatten out. I'm getting control. some, some dark licorice in this too. Yeah. I am getting licorice now. Can oh I- my God. Yeah. Are you really? Not red liquor. Oh, fucking A. Random belligerence. Red licorice edition. <laughs> <laughs> Siobhan brought a whole bag of Twizzlers. And she's like uh, just chomping at the bit to taste the, the red licorice in the whiskey. Right. Okay, so uh, some of the other expressions. There is the 10-year rye, which is also 100% rye, also 100 proof, and also sourced from that same Alberta, Canada whiskey. And that retails for 70 to $80. Then there's the farm stock rye, uh, bottled in barn, they call it. That's 100% rye, 86 proof. It's the latest annual release and the first ever majority Whistle Pig whiskey. Uh, mm. That retails for about $80. The uh, fourth expression that they have is home stock whiskey, 45% rye, 30% wheat, 25% barley. So it's not a bourbon or a rye. It's just a whiskey. Is that made by them? Yeah. So this is sort of uh, riffing off their farm stock. They call it home stock because it was released just this past spring in something billed as a virtual blending event in which Whistlepig fans blended three different types of whiskey, a four-year rye, a five-year wheat, and a five-year barley from the comfort and safety of their homes in the time of COVID via the whiskey ordering service Flaviar. And then they voted for their final recipe. That also retails for about $80. So in addition to their six year and 10 year, they also have a 15 year, which is called estate oak rye. It's a hundred percent rye. Also, it's 92 proof. Uh, this is the Canadian rye again, but double barreled in new Vermont oak harvested from whistle pigs own farm. Apparently, Vermont oak differs from oak sourced in other places in the countries because the cold winters in Vermont, their oak... It's the, harder, right? It's the, more dense. The rings are more tightly packed, exactly. Ooh. Would that lead to uh, having less of a uh, wastage? Well, what they say is that each ring is an opportunity to impart more flavor into the whiskey. I'll pack your ring, Gabe. Oh, my well, God. Well, that should be a ton of flavor, then. There's so ah. much anus ah. jokes. Anus. Anus jokes. <laughs> the price are around 200 bucks. They also have an 18-year called the Double Malt Rye. Oh, I don't think I even knew they had an 18. Yeah, oh. it's 79% rye, 15% malted rye, right. and, and 6%... $8,000. and six percent malted barley that's why it's called double malt wow cool at 92 proof it's a limited release expression that comes with a hand-pressed crystal stopper atop Mm, each bottle the malted rye apparently imparts more floral and earthy flavors as opposed to the bold peppery flavors of the classic rye Mm, and you can enjoy this as opposed to allowing your children to go to college (laughs) Right. <laughs> yes. Because uh, it Take tastes, out a small home equity Is that loan. more than the Boss Hog? No, but it's comparable. It's about 400 Keep to $500. Okay. Yeah. All right. And, and Scott and I have said this before. Maybe you're not going to spend 250 for a bottle or 500 for a bottle. Right. But for at least the 15-year, you know, you can go to a place like the local lounge where we go, and, and for 20, 24 bucks, you can buy a nice dram of it and try it. It's not unattainable. And to that point, the, the last expression that they have is their premium, top-of-the-line bottling, the Boss Hog. You got to bring a D to your house to get that. Yeah. The current one is Edition 6. Ed and I have actually had a little bit of the Edition 6. And 5. And 5. Which is crazy. At the local lounge, which is Brackers. crazy. And paid nothing for them. And paid nothing Both for them. Both were given to us by um, a locker mates. Yes. People have lockers there. It's just, it's, it's really great. So you the sold, sold, you sold your charm. It worked in your favor. Yeah. You, you had yeah. to sell your souls for that taste, yeah, though. Yeah, we did. Uh, Maybe may handy. Um, oh. Thomas H. Handy. Thomas H. Handy. Yeah. Oh, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Way to bring it around. <laughs> so this is the one that's out now is the edition six. It's called the Samurai Scientist. Mm -hmm. It's 100% rye proofed at barrel proof, which they usually do between 120 and 122. Yeah. It's a 16 year Canadian rye finished in barrels that contained umeshu, a Japanese aged liquor made from the unripened ume fruit, which is sort of an Asian stone fruit, mm -hmm. like a plum or an apricot, and named in honor of Yokichi Takamine, who pioneered the koji fermentation process in American whiskey industry over a century ago. So that last sentence that I just spoke sent me into an hour-long research rabbit hole <laughs> of <laughs> Japanese cuisine, the fertilizer industry, mold-based fermentation, crystallized adrenaline, Jeez. and the cherry trees that line the Potomac River in Washington, D.C. Mm. So one day, if, when we're rich and famous enough, Ed, to score a bottle of Boss Hog, we're going to tell that whole story because it is episode worthy. Okay. And Tastes. Gabe and I have to be on that. Oh, of course. Well, I mean, when I get, when well, I convince Whistlepig to send us a Boss Hog. Yes. For us to feature like <laughs> Sexton did. And that will be like, we'll made it. So that's it. I mean, final thoughts on all these whiskeys. I like the Sazerac, but the Whistle Pig brought something out that was like the one that had the minty taste. Was oh, the, that, that, the, was, that was the, the piggyback. piggyback yeah. Yeah. The piggyback from nothing I've ever tasted before. They were all very good. Cool. I think the piggyback's a surprise tonight. I figured it was going to get wiped out by its 12-year-old yeah, you know, right. brother, if you will. Yeah. We have a half the age, and yet it's not half as good. And a third of the price. <laughs> right. So it's half his age, a third of the price, and you're like, I'm not really sure which one I like better. Yeah. So if that's not the surprise tonight, I don't know what is. Uh, the Sazerac is definitely a surprise that it's a standalone drink. Yeah. Both the piggyback and the Sazerac can be mixed because their price points are low enough where you don't feel too bad. Sure. I really sure. wish Anders was here because I'd love to see Anders talk about these two from more of a professional standpoint. Right. Maybe I'm missing something. And, and why he likes it so much because right, he was very complimentary of it uh, on our show. He said it was the pivotal point between price and taste. Yeah. Maybe because you always think, well, the aging always supposed to bring out the, the better taste, but maybe that's not always the case. Willett Family Estate Rye four year shows us that yeah. you don't necessarily need to be ten years in. Right. And you can absolutely overage a whiskey. Some things are even better than, than the year before. Yeah. <laughs> he just touched Siobhan. <laughs> <laughs> She's like a fine wine. She gets better every year. Siobhan, what, what was your favorite? Sazerac. Oh, right. yeah. interesting. I just interesting. I think the others were just, just too much spice. Yeah. I thought. I think, you know, the, I, I, think just, I had to go to the Sazerac, the Sazerac too. Just, just a little perfect. bit. Perfect. These are three bottles. And number one, the, the whistle pigs. I know it's something that you just you're not going to buy an everyday bottle. They're they're higher up. Well, there. not the not the twelve year. Yeah, the Sazerac. You, sometimes you just can't find it. I looked for Sazerac. I can't find it. So I'm going to be looking for the Sazerac now. I What's think it? it's a three way tie. I mean, they're they're very very close, but it shouldn't be close. When one's 115 dollars, it shouldn't be close to the two forty dollar ones. Well, I got you there. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, sometimes you take a chance, and it's I'm not, not always. I'm not sad that we have it, but it all comes down to taste. And uh, like I said, I think it's a three way tie between the three. They're all different. They're all rise. Right. Mm -hmm. And that just, I think, that represents what we've been talking about by the resurgence of rise today and how you can get unique expressions from a single grain. Right. And I will say one thing about Whistle Pig. To build your company and your brand to that level using sourced fucking whiskey is unbelievable to me. Mm -hmm. And I want to know how big is fucking MGP. It's 300 acres, <laughs> which is less than the Whistle Pig grounds. Mm -hmm. And yet they supply the entire whiskey drinking world with sourced whiskey. And yeah, they're tightly packed. I, I swear to God, yeah. like how many rows of rye whiskey do they have? And whatever you need. Oh, we need a 21 yeah. year. Oh, yeah. oh, we got oh, yeah. it. We got <laughs> right we here. Have 16 barrels of 21. Which one do you want? I want to go to MGP. I want to interview them, the people that run that. They're like the, the magicians of the whiskey industry. Mm. Whiskey tangent at gmail.com. <laughs> yes. Hit us up. Hit MGP. MGP. Course. We've been jerking you off since episode one. I mean, <laughs> we have given you all the props in the world, and we've heard nothing from you. Don't you have a marketing department? Insert Where is here. our bale of wheat or something? Like send us, <laughs> send us a gallon of straight rye whiskey, something. Something. All right. We've kissed your ass. No, no. Oh. No. Listen to me. Random belligerence. MGP edition. 
No. <laughs> keep it, no, keep what it I was going to say was, all right, I think we can wrap up the yeah. episode. Yeah. So uh, I think this episode with the great celebration of Rise Resurgence, <sighs> we've explored it from many different angles. Many. We've tried different whistle pigs. Countless. We tried Sazerac. Myriad. We tried four different types of cheesecake that were <laughs> that were that was on the sampler wheel that Gabe brought. Gabe. We had three different types of hoagies to pregame and. Just so you know, for pregame, we did a 14-year Knob Creek. We did a couple of local distilled weeders. Mm-hmm. A we, partridge we even did some rubbing alcohol, just for right. shits and giggles. Right, we did, we did rubbing <laughs> alcohol and basically kerosene that just to get our palates clean. We're stuffing gas out of my car and licked it. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> and because of COVID, shots of hand sanitizer all around. <laughs> it's, it's over 60% alcohol. <laughs> That's right. All while wearing our face masks. Right. <laughs> our hand sanitizer is calf strength. We'll say that. So uh, I want to thank everybody for tuning into this bizarre episode, but yes. it was so much fun doing, and I thank Thanks, Siobhan and Gabe, for being here, guys. Thanks again, Thank guys. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's good to be back. They yeah. joined us on the short for Sexton, which you've already heard, and we've given Gabe a couple of ounces of the Sexton to take back for his Irish Infinity bottle, which we, we can't did. wait to He was so appreciative of it, too. Oh, no, yeah. he wasn't. He, he was wasn't. like, what the fuck is this? He was kind of belligerent. It but was we real still- belligerent. It, did you ever see the Inside Out? The cartoon, the yes. Pixar cartoon that gave it the rage <laughs> guy, well, <they're> just <laughs> blowing a stack every. I'm the four little seconds. red guy, right? <laughs> yes, I'm really a patient person at heart. Are you? Really? No, Is like off, deep <laughs> all the way down. It's not me. Okay, it's, so it's, it's the world. It's not me. Okay, all right. It's everybody but you, huh? We think I'm it. not the one with the problem. <laughs> oh, edit, leave it in. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to thank everybody for tuning in. And honestly, if you're one of the people out there who's never really delved into rye whiskey, you're missing a tremendous opportunity. It makes a great cocktail, if nothing else. But yet, there's many expressions that are delicious, neat, or on the rocks. And we've sampled several tonight. Love on the rocks. Ain't no surprise. Give me some whiskey and I'll sell you some rye. <laughs> <There Nice. you. laughs> so for the Whiskey Tangent Podcast, I'm Ed. I'm Scott. I'm Siobhan. And I'm Gabe. And we'll see you next time. Cheers, everyone. If you enjoyed this podcast episode, be sure to check out our next episode, which is way better than this one. Oh, yeah. Also, follow and like our Facebook page at facebook.com slash Whiskey Tangent. And follow us on Twitter at Whiskey Tangent. You can follow me personally at That Whiskey Guy. And follow Scott at Giant Cup of Awesome, spelled A-W-S-U-M, just to be annoying. Hey! You can email us any questions, comments, or love at whiskeytangent at gmail.com. And of course, you can find us always at our podcast website, whiskeytangent.podbean.com.